Today is the 11th of a new month, October. The 1st of September forever will be the worst day of my life, the worst month in my life, the most horrific event that I lived through. And timing is everything, you know. And I keep telling everybody, if the eye of the hurricane wouldn't have gone through during the daylight hour, my town of Dundas Town, Murphy Town, indeed, Mount Shaba, would have been a ghost town. They would have been picking up the bodies for years to come, just picking up what's left. There weren't going to be much people to tell the story, but I was one of them to tell the story. We were out walking during the eye, and I saw Pastor Mills coming down. I could see that the, his roof was gone. He came down checking, like a good bishop should, checking the neighborhood. And there was nothing. I said, uh, Bishop Mills, well, we got an hour to find some place to, to evacuate to. Everything has been compromised. My Uncle Dervid had the only house that was able or was standing. But there was 50 people waiting to get inside that three-bedroom house. And uh, it's being compromised a little bit. So I said, I'm not going in there. I'm going to spend the next 15 hours in that condition. Because for some reason, the sewer water came up in all of our homes and flooded the place with sewer water. So you don't want to go through 12, 13 hours of smelling sewer water up to your neck. But we didn't know where to go. And... I tell them, I said, uh, we are looking for the ones that are dead. Somebody said their mother gone, their sister gone, their wife gone. I said, but well, they gone. Ain't nothing you can do with that. They're gone. They got suckled to see. You ever see the water uh, five feet? I've never seen that experience such an event. The water up to your neck. All of a sudden, you hear zip. Not a sound. You could hear a pin drop instantaneously. Then the water, like, run out to see the water, like, I'm watching the water. We couldn't see the road. I couldn't see the road. Couldn't see the yard. The car's floating in the yard. All of a sudden, no water. Anywhere around, the puddle of water was sucked out to sea by the wind and the power of nature. Where the hell did six feet of water go in seconds, just like that? Bam! My God, the water's gone, and it's going to come back. I saw the tsunami, but I never witnessed it. I say, uh, Bishop Mills, she's almost ready to come back around. And we all looking around, 360, where the hell would we go? Somebody yelled down the road, Bishop Mills, your church is the only building in Dundestan that's standing without any damage. How could this be possible? One church, one building is standing. Well, I ain't want hair about the impossible. I want to get there. It was one mile away. And it seems like an eternity. I think that guy that took us there, that truck, I thought he was going to kill us before he got there because he was driving like a maniac. But there's stuff on the street. Uh, the rain is beating on you. Ever hear rain or feel rain? beating on you like somebody shooting you with a BB gun. You just could feel the pain. And we got there. And the same thing that I see happening in Nassau happened at the center. We started off with about 20 of us. And even during the eye of the storm, the word got out to the Haitian community that the center was available. So the men came and checked to see if this was true. And they said to Pastor Mills, Bishop Mills, um, we come back. We go get family. I said, Mills, well, where are they going? But they're going to get family. But sure enough, they went in the, the storm and they came back in the storm with their family, their kids and everybody. They hunkered down. All of a sudden, we got 200 to 50 us. 
Um, so we ask, just like the church is asking in Nassau for some help from the government, we just ask for two securities. And we can get two securities, 250 us. Uh, Bishop Mills said, you know, this is too much. Uh, we got to evacuate the Nassau. Thank God my cousin sent an airplane for us because we can stand that line of 3,000 people at the airport of Marshaba. And the line was so huge that people slept for days in the airport on the floor trying to get out with no answer on how and when we were. We got evacuated smooth. My cousin came in on the plane to make sure nobody take her flight. And I want to say thank you for you, Connie. You saved so much of me. And uh, back in Abaco, couldn't get no help from anybody. Flushing the bathroom with the water of the pond. You imagine 250 people? Some of them wouldn't flush that bathroom for nothing. I know the nastiness. You got to flush the bathroom for them. You got to cook for them. And then uh, now, so I see the same thing. The government, the, the people in the church say, you know what? We're doing all this stuff. All we need for the government to do is to uh, pay our light bill. No response for the government. We have to pay made. And they recognize that the people that are getting the help are not actually Bahamian. All the centers are 95% Haitians. So the churches say, you know what? We got to help our people. Although the Haitians need help too, but we have been in this now four weeks, no help from the government. So close our church up, send them all to the Kendall Isaac gym where they're getting three meals a day, air conditioned. The people from Dundas and Murphytown have not got that luxury. They are not getting three meals a day. You imagine persons that uh, go from paycheck to paycheck. I'm one of those persons. I got a lot of bills. Money ain't coming in no more. Zero, zero, zero money is coming in. Thank God for my American friends that I drove them back and forth and they befriended me. And they reached out to me after the storm. If it wasn't for them... Kai would be like a skeleton, hungry. Thank God for the people where I'm staying now that I don't have to worry for now. I don't know when my luck going to run out. That I have a place now over my head that I don't have to worry about a thousand dollars. And you know what the heartening thing about this hurricane in Nassau, Bahamian people? Every Haitian reach out to every Haitian and help every Haitian. The people from Abaco, I don't know why they did it to us and my people. Um, maybe they thought that the government was going to help to pay our rent. But we went and we asked for the price for the building. And when we got there, they tell us $500. They added another 800 in some cases $1,000 onto that. By the time you got off the phone and went to check out the place, they went from 500 and added another 1800 onto that. That is the most horrific price gouging that I've ever seen. These people are animals. We just daily and merely escape, escape debt. And the Bahamian people in Nassau, these people in Nassau, they're brutes. They're buzzards. They're feeding off our bones. We just left with the bones, the clothes on our back. And they're hitting us with excess of eight to one thousand dollars. Price gouging of people that pay from day to day, paycheck to paycheck. The people in Nassau are brutalizing us with the rent. How could that be? A Haitian would never do that to a Haitian. They welcome them in, they feed them, and they clothe them. But they have an, a massive amount of price gouging in Nassau. That is putting extra burden on the backs of Abacunians. That is unacceptable, Nassau. And those of you that are doing that and continue to do that, shame, shame, shame on you. Life is a cycle. I hope the Abaco people meet you on the other end of that circle for what you have done and the price gouging of our 
rent. When Bahamas ain't going to sleep on no gymnasium with a thousand illegals. Bahamas that evacuated from Abaco didn't have defense force, social service, the police force, all these people guarding them and protecting them. I wonder, have social service, defense force, police force, reached out to the many Abaconians, Bahamians? I'll tell you what they did. They did nothing. I haven't seen or heard from them, and I ain't got zero. And they know how to get a hold of me. So if they didn't reach out to Kai Mills, woe be unto the other 8,000 of us that are in Nassau that are evacuees. The monies are only going towards the Haitians. And guess what? They are sending their monies back to Haiti to build up their lives. The government of the Bahamas is so naive. This is the time to say, call the central bank government and say, look here, no amount of money is going to be sent from the social service, from national insurance into Haiti to make the Haitians life better. Stop that. Put a stop to it and say every dollar going to be circulated in the economy of the Bahamas. No money is going by Western Union or any other means into Haiti from the Bahamas government purse to date. They are still sending money from social service, national insurance, into Haiti to improve the quality of life for Haitians, and that money ought to be stopped. Come on, Mr. Prime Minister. Come on, Bahamas. That money should be spread and circulated within our economy to get our economy, the economy of Abaco, jump-started. But if they send the money to Haiti, how is that going to help this country? Put a stop to it, somebody. It's another one of these Kai Care videos. You're here live in Nassau. Giving information, information to the government. That's why we need one of us to sit at the table to let the government know of what is and is not happening for and to the recovery of Abaconians. Kai Care's live on WCAY.